Evil Dead Rise. The Evil Dead franchise is one of the oldest and most beloved franchises in the genre, and it loves its own history. Throwback references and Easter eggs have been a staple in the series ever since Evil Dead 2, so today I'm going to perform a deep analysis on Evil Dead Rise, extracting as many Easter eggs and references as I can. So, the very opening shot of the film is nearly identical to how we begin the original original Evil Dead movie, the now iconic POV travelling shots moving through the tree line and across the lake appears once again. It moves towards a wooden cabin, classic, though not the same cabin as the original. However, you can spot a clock on the wall inside the cabin which is identical to the clock from the originals. Nice. The first deadite we see in the film, Jess, reads an excerpt of Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Jess reads the passage without looking at the book, which echoes the card prediction scene in the original, where Cheryl correctly guesses a series of cards without being able to see them. The Wuthering Heights reference also fits quite nicely with what Ash experienced. Part of the recited quote is, I tried to draw back my arm, but the hand clung to it. This relates to Ash's hand because becoming possessed in Evil Dead 2, where he tried to regain control of his arm, but the hand had different ideas, so it was quite a nice addition. When we jump ahead to be introduced to Beth, the cubicle door has a graffiti monster face on it, where the eyes are overflowing with green slime. We've seen a whole manner of sludgy goodness come out of every deadite hole over the years. Well, most holes. We even get Ellie vomiting up a frothy white liquid during her change. Personally, I thought these moments resembled the climax to the first Evil Dead in particular, where all kinds of goo comes out of the deadites. And the green colour on the monster eyes is similar to the green deadite blood when Ash cuts down Ed in Evil Dead 2. It's apparent that Evil Dead 2 was the strongest influence in this film's creation, with director Lee Cronin being a self-confessed lover of the film. And you can really tell that through a couple specific moments in Rise. We get a new variation of the iconic eyeball spit scene, where here the eye is bitten out of Gabe's face and spit into the mouth of Jake. By the way, the sound effect of the eyeball being bitten out in Rise was achieved by Bruce Campbell biting into an apple. <laughs> That's brilliant. Ellie sits outside the apartment and lures in Cassie by singing a haunting lullaby. It's a hush -a bye baby style song, which sounds very Irish. hush -a -bye baby, baby, not mine. So I wonder if this was something from Cronin's childhood. Either way, there are similarities here to the Hush Little Baby lullaby sung to Annie Norby. In the incredibly popular cheese grater scene, Bridget and Beth do battle on the kitchen floor using a series of appliances and gadgets. I immediately was drawn back to Ash trying to fight his own hand in the cabin kitchen, where plates and cutlery were part of the arsenal. Plus, later in Rise, it's a kitchen knife which is used to kill Danny, while it was a kitchen knife that Ash used to pin his hand to the floor. Of course, the subtitle of Evil Dead 2 is Dead by Dawn, a line introduced by the Deadites in that film. And the group chanting of Dead by Dawn returns here. Dead by Dawn! Dead by Dawn! We even get Ellie saying, I will swallow your soul. Another legendary Evil Dead 2 line said by Henrietta. I'll swallow your soul. Speaking of Henrietta, when Ellie sends the kids to go get pizza, we can see on the boxes that they went to Henrietta's pizzeria. Delightful. The slogan for the pizzeria is Come Get Some, which Beth later says when confronting the family deadite. Come get some. And is also a famous Ash line from Army of Darkness. Come get some. Now let's talk about the incantation which brings the Kandarian demons to the tower block. It's the classic Kandar chant we've heard before. Shut it off. Kandar. 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 And it gave me chills hearing it here again. Next up, 
the weapons. We all know that the shotgun and the chainsaw are the bread and butter of Evil Dead. So naturally we get both here. In terms of the bloodshed, Evil Dead loves enormous showers of the red stuff. So here we get the elevator filled with blood, plus the Danny death scene where his face is covered in claret. Lovely. Another special effect, which was a wink to the past, is Bridget's tattoo scar becoming infected with the black splinter effect. We've seen this before on Linda's pencil wound in the original, and on Asher's hand in Evil Dead 2. So cool. Wanna take those effects further though? Well, in the original and second Evil Dead, plus the Alvarez version, we got scenes where the forest comes to life and the vines wrap around their victims. This has been given a sweet modern spin in Rise, with Ellie being consumed and contorted by the elevator cables. I love this evolution of those forest sequences. Plus, if you have a good scout of Ellie's tattoos, even she has vines wrapping around her arms, which is a sick little touch. How about the sound of the film, though? Well, I loved how the Deadites have those classic multi-layered voices. But I also noticed that their body parts creaked in certain movements, such as after Beth smashes the scissors into Ellie's face. These are both elements I immediately identify with the Deadites of old. The final shot of Rise gives us a look at several POV shots heading towards their target, eventually ending on their face and cutting to black, just like how the original ends up, with the exception of that being only one camera. So that's it for my breakdown of certain moments and themes that relate to the rest of the franchise, but I also want to cover many of the names used in the film. I've already mentioned Henrietta's Pizzeria, but how about Fonda's Tree Surgery, as seen in the car park? It was Bridget Fonda who briefly played Asher's girlfriend Linda in the opening of Army of Darkness. Yeah, that's right, Bridget Fonda. And here we have our own Bridget. Interestingly, those historic Evil Dead posters for the first movie, the actress in those shots who never appeared in the movie itself, is Bridget Hoffman. How about that? Also, a little bit of a stretch this one, admittedly, but Bridget is nicknamed Bridge in Rise, and it's the bridge being destroyed which makes Ash unable to leave the cabin. How about some of the other names? I've gone through the credits for Evil Dead Rise for character names to try draw some comparisons. In the opening sequence of Rise, we have Teresa and and Jessica. Teresa Tilly played Shelley in The Evil Dead, while Jessica Lucas played Olivia in the 2013 version. Our protagonist of the film is named Beth, and in The Evil Dead comics, Beth Norby was the wife of Professor Raymond Norby. Beth uses the chainsaw to save the day in this film, and though the film is dark, if you crank up the brightness, you can see the name Elise written on it. Elise Cowitz, or perhaps Covitz, apologies if pronounced incorrectly, was this film's property master, as well as the property master on Ash vs Evil Dead. This chainsaw is also intentionally the same colour as the beloved Oldsmobile. Moving on, Ellie and her family live in the Mondi apartments. Mondi not being a reference to a name, but an anagram of demon. We've also got Danny. It was Dan Hicks who played Jake in Evil Dead 2, and in Rise, we even have our own character named Jake. We also have Scott, who was the second male character in the original film. There, Scott wore a flannel shirt remarkably similar to the one worn by Cassie in Rise. And if you want one more name to finish off this segment, look no further than the character of Bruce. We even get the real Bruce, Mr. Campbell himself, having a vocal cameo in the movie, lending his voice to the incantation records found by Danny. To conclude this deep analysis, there are also a couple potential nods to other films as influences. The most obvious one was the blood elevator scene, lifted directly from The Shining. Speaking of, how could you not mistake this ground up door holding shot? We get a scene where Ellie, the possessed mother, bangs her head against the door of the apartment. This gave me shades of hereditary where Annie bangs her head against the attic door. And also the scene where Ellie crawls on the ceiling out of focus fits with this moment in Hereditary 2. Another of Ari Aster's films, Midsummer, may be a reference too, with the triangular cabin in an idyllic location, like our cabin in Rise. To refer to one of the all-time notorious horror films, 
Seeing Bridget with a sheet over her head wielding a kitchen knife took me back to Michael Myers covered by the sheet in Halloween. I also thought that the design of this film's Book of the Dead, with its sharp locking teeth, bared a striking resemblance to the Monster Book of Monsters from Harry Potter. Finally, there's the grotesque family deadite which scuttles around the car park. To me, it made me think of John Carpenter's The Thing, but also, more recently, The Rat King from The Last of Us Part 2. Great stuff. So that's me done. Just about everything I could extract from Evil Dead Rise. But was there more? Let me know. If you appreciated this video, our next goal for the channel is 35,000 subscribers. So if you'd like more content about horror movies throughout history, then do consider it. Join us! I've been Connor from Unleash the Ghouls, and as ever, thanks for watching. But before I go, I've got a quick message about a super cool upcoming Blu ray release. Our friends at Eureka will soon be dropping their their hopping mad Blu-ray box set, featuring all the sequels to the bonkers 1985 comedy horror, Mr. Vampire. This includes Mr. Vampire 2, 3, 4, and Vampire vs. Vampire. This cult collection of Hong Kong craziness is available May 22nd, and you can pre-order one of the 2,000 limited edition copies right now at eurekavideo.co.uk. Cheers out.